Good morning, everyone. Uh, as you can see here, I've got some uh, functions behind me and I've got their derivatives. And what you'll notice is that all those derivatives are the same. What this means, though, is there's a problem. If I start with a, differenti a differential equation, so I start with f dash x, and I wanted to find that original function. What do I end up having to do? All right. So when we are different, when we're differentiating by rule, we have to work with. So if y equals ax to the n, then dy dx equals a n x to the n minus 1. And so forth for every other term in the sequence. But as you can see there, multiple a diff multiple different equations can create the same derivative equation. So if I start with dy dx equals 4x plus 5, what possible equations could I have started with to create that derivative? Right. What possible equations could I have started with to end up with that derivative? Now, what we can do is we can follow the logic backwards and do the opposite of what we've got going on here. So, first things first, before I do anything else on here, I want to recognize that this is being multiplied by 1, which is also can be written as x to the 0. And that's going to be important because we're going to have to do a couple of things. What I'm going to do is to anti-differentiate this weird squiggly line. I'm going to look at the power. In that case, it's 1. I'm going to go 4. 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this one here. That's why I put the x to the 0 in here. So it's 0 plus 1, which is 1. And then I'm going to divide by the new power. And what I create is 4x squared divided by 2 plus 5. x to the 1 is just x divided by 1 is just that. So we just leave it like that. So what's 4 over 2? Well, that's 2. So I create 2x squared plus 5x. So 2x squared plus 5x. But that's not my answer. All right? Because as I showed you before, there can be multiple equations that create the same differential equation. 
And the only thing that's different between the ones up above was the constant on the end. And now I could have changed that constant to literally any number. Literally any number. But when I differentiate it, it doesn't matter what that number on the end was because that number gets dropped off. And the same thing happens here. And what I do is I represent that with a constant plus C. Whenever you are anti-differentiating, so whenever you are doing the opposite of what we've been doing for the last bunch of time, always, always, always put a plus C on the end. Then, if there is another piece of information, you can use that to find the constant that goes with it. All right? Every possible anti-differentiated equation needs a plus C on the end. Because you don't know if it's plus one or plus two or plus three or plus four. So if I go back and I went back to this here and I wanted to find the integral or the, uh, um, the anti-differentiated form of 4x plus 3, well, it could be this. It could be this, it could be this, it could be plus six, it could be, you know, plus 10, it could be plus six, it could be minus six, it could be literally any number that goes there. So if dy dx equals ax to the n, then y equals ax to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, which is the new power. Dot, 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 for every other term, plus c, constant on the end. Can't forget the constant. So, dy dx equals Two x plus five. Y equals. So there's the formula that goes with it. Have a go yourself. So find, figure out what the powers of x are for all the terms in that differentiated equation. Add one to all of those powers, then divide everything by the new power. All right, so in this case here, 
what about what power have I got here? Well, that's just one. What power do I have here? Well, that's x of a zero. All right, a constant in a differentiated equation gains an x. And Dylan, you are not correct. You forgot something very, very important. All right. So I'm going to add one to the power. So that's going to make it x squared. And then we we'll divide by the new power. No, I didn't say the word. I'm going to add one to the power, divide by the new power. And now I'm going to cancel down. Cancel, cancel, 5 over 1, don't need that. And then I'm going to put my plus C on there. So, here's where that plus C gets dealt with. If f dash x equals two x plus nine and f of one equals one, find f of x. All right, so I have two pieces of information. I have f dash x, but I also have a piece of information about f1. f1 is 1. So I have two pieces of information, and now I'm going to bring them all together to create a full equation. So, first things first, let's look at f dash x and anti differentiate it. Well, that means I'm going to have, well, it's going to be 2x, x, uh, n plus 1 is going to be 2, all divided by the new power, plus 9x to the 1 divided by 1, plus c, cancel all that down, and I have x squared plus 9x plus c. And that should be my new f of x. But obviously I'm not finished yet because I have I have a plus c that I don't want. And I have this other piece of information that I found out earlier. What well, was told earlier. The f f of one is equal to 1. So, let's do something with it. Let's actually use, so if f of 1 is equal to 1, then f of 1 is going to be equal to 1 squared plus 9 times 1 plus c. So that's 1 equals 1 plus 9 plus c. What value? And then I'm going to solve for c. So 1, 1 equals 10 plus c, c equals minus 9. And since c equals minus 9, we can now go back and we can now write the full equation f of x equals x squared plus 9x minus 9. So what I've created here is an equation that has a derivative of this while also meeting this particular requirement. Only one equation is going to have both of those things. All right, so you've turned plus C with its infinite number of possibilities to one answer. 
Now, there may be times where I don't give you that piece of information, in which case you just leave it as plus C. But if I give you that extra piece of information, then you're expected to probably get rid of it. Just going to move myself around a little bit. All right, so let's try, let's try another one. Uh, so I'm going to start with G dash X. And this time I'm going to I'm going to start with that. And what I also know about the equation is is that g dash one equals zero. I have two pieces of information. two pieces of information to work with here. So, what I'm going to do is just quickly fill in my powers here. So I'm going to go now find g of x. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So that's 3x to the 3 over 3. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Add 1 to the power divided by the new power. So that's 1 over 1, so we just don't bother with that. Plus C on the end. Now we cancel down what we can. That 3 and that 3 go away. That 6 and that, that go away to become a 3. So I now have x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x plus c. Now, I know that g of 1 is equal to 0. So, I have my g of x. I'm now going to say g of 1 is equal to 0. So that means I'm going to have 0 equals 1 plus 3 times 1 minus 8 times 1 plus C. So that's going to be 1 plus 3 minus 8 plus C. 4 minus 8 plus C. And remember this is all equal to 0. So minus 8. So 4 minus 8 is minus 4 plus C. That means that C is equal to 4. And then you would go back up and write the full equation properly with no C in it. G of X is equal to X cubed plus 3X squared minus 8X plus 4. All right, so there's no first principles. There's no other sneaky stuff. You are given the rule to start with. You just have to remember to deal with the plus C if you have the information. So, let me stop the recording there.